I love Dungeons and Dragons. Back in 2017, I saw this little thing called Critical Role, and I saw the 85th little episode that was there, and I watched it, and I had no idea what was going on, but then came Scanlan's mother. And if you know, you know. I was blown away that you could tell such amazing storytelling in D&D. But just because I love Dungeons and Dragons doesn't mean it's for me. You see, I'm a theater kid. Twice to three times a week, I'm on stage performing or practicing or teaching other people improv. And Dungeons and Dragons doesn't have the mechanics to back that up. Let me tell you a story. When I was a wee little lass, I devoured all of Critical Role content. I watched everything from day one to day like 85 weeks and then you add those like two years. So I watched all of it up to the current event and I was super excited to start playing Dungeons and Dragons for myself. So I went out there and I asked my friends like, hey, do you want to play D&D? Hey, do you want to play D&D? Hey, do you want to play D&D? And I found one friend that already had a group. So I joined them and I wrote up my little character, Neil Baker, a wizard that can teleport that was trying to save their sister from whatever evil curse a necromancer put on her. And I got my little two-page document, printed it out at the school computers, and then ran over it. Well, drive over, because it was it's like an hour drive. It was a long drive. It doesn't matter. So I drove over to my friend's house, and I sat down with a group of strangers and my friend, and I was like, here's my character. Let's play D&D. And they laughed. They laughed at me. They were like, okay, here you go. They brought out a little player's handbook and say, all right, let's sit down. The DM will go through and help build your character for you. So after about two hours, I built my character and made my little conjuration wizard that could teleport as a bonus action. So we were out there in an Elders Horror campaign run by our little DM and it was fantastic. I loved every minute of it. We were going out there saving people, fighting lots, and we finally made it to the big bad evil dude, the king in yellow. The Elder's Horror Abomination was about to let loose onto the realm. And there was one man standing in our way, the king in yellow. He was surrounded by seven different types of magical shields. And I looked at that and I was like, huh, my rules. They say that I'm allowed to teleport anywhere that I can see. And so I said, DM, yes, can I see the king in yellow? Yes. I bonus action teleport to him. And everyone started freaking out because this was like the big bad evil dude and I was about to like, oh! So I teleported right into him, had to pass a few checks for like whatever magical interference thing. And I got there and I got out like my little dagger that I've been carrying because I hated combat and I didn't want to get into it. But this was my shining moment. I knew nothing was going to go right if I didn't do it right then and there. And slash, it got like two damage points. <laughs> I was able to cut off two fingers. And then the druid was like, can I see the wizard's ring? And are the wizard's rings made out of metal? Yes. I cast heat metal! And so he heated the metal of the rings and burnt off the other two fingers. We saved the day and that was so cool. We didn't have to beat the big bad evil elders monster thing and we, we stopped all of it. But there lies my problem. I had to look at the rules to see what I could do rather than wanting to do something and then just kind of making it work. Rules are great. Rules are fantastic. They are how we're able to moderate our different power levels and make sure that we don't say, well, my dad could beat up your dad because my dad's better than your dad and have those little arguments of who's really more powerful. But we're adults and I can trust other adults to have fun, to not overgame and to overpower. So here's another story. So it's several years later. I've DM'd D&D for a long time and I've 
have a group of people coming over to my house and we play uh, Dungeons and Dragons and different TTRPGs and board games. So there my players were, they were sitting down getting ready to uh, play their characters. So we played the introductions, like, what did you learn? Okay, we're going on a big journey. Uh, roll to do, like, some perilous journey actions. And so they rolled, and the druid scout was like, all right, I rolled really well. I rolled perfectly. I can see everything. I was like, yeah, you can. You see something there. You, you see a, uh, a of some creatures in some, in, in some river water. And then I had that druid roll a roll to figure out whether or not they noticed what those creatures were. Now, we weren't playing D&D 5e. We were playing Dungeon World. And Dungeon World has a role called Spout Lore. And Spout Lore is literally, I tell you lore if you roll it. And so they rolled, they got an overwhelming success on figuring out what this creature was. And instead of me figuring out what it was, I turn to them and say, Hey, you. This you, the player, what are they? And that broke him. He was so like, okay, well, they're, they're water gnolls. All right, what do water gnolls look like? And then the one player over here piped up and was like, they're hippos. And then another player, they're bipedal hippos. All right, so you have these bipedal hippos. Um, are they friendly? Are they hostile? And then the druid looks at me slowly, grins. They are territorial and actively aggressive. Oh, really? And they are super powerful. Oh, really? You know, like, I'm handing you the reins. You don't have to make it difficult here for yourself. And then our fire lizard person uh, piped up and said, Well, uh, it's funner this way. And so we played it that way. They were super aggressive. They're like, all right, you, you're going to go up there uh, and, and you're going to sneak up and steal some stuff. Uh, how many of those, those hippo, th those water gnolls are there? And the thief looked over and looked at the other two and was like, there's 20 of them. So our three little band of very barely scratched the surface of power level the gamers created super high level water gnolls and made them massively overnumbered them. It's like, all right, you can turn back now if you want to and you can go back. And the thief was like, no, I want to steal some of their fish. And so they were hoisted by their own batard, they failed the stealth roll, they had, had a big old chase scene, won some rolls, lost some other rolls, and they finally made it into like a big old ring of fire, the fire lizards are trying to take them back, they're surrounded on all sides, and the druid says, I'm gonna turn into a rock. Like a, a rock like a boulder rock? No, like, like a big bird rock. I was like, all right. Sure. So they rolled, they turned into the, a rock, but they failed their roll. And so, me as the DM, when they fail their roll, I get to make something happen. This tangent of water knolls was nothing what I had planned. So I thought, you know, let's, let's give it to him. Let's make something uh, uh, juicy. You see, the thief earlier that morning had stolen something from the other player, uh, a gilded acorn, very highly treasured. And so I was like, huh, you know what? You morph into that rock, but you take your thief friend with you and you are now one body, two minds, and you can read each other's thoughts. Uh, good luck getting out of there. So immediately they started bickering back and forth in their brain space and the lizard there was just sipping tea, just, just, all right, what's going on? Waiting for these water gnolls to come into the fire and start killing them. And they finally figured out their, their stuff out. Uh, the lizard hopped on and they flew away. Now, I tell you these two different stories. Both of them have so much like lore and excitement and passion. One of them was a on-rail story, and one of them was a very free-flowy story. But 
that's not what I really cared to explore. That's not the reason why I'm telling these two stories. Because you can DM the same way that I do and just hand the reins over to the players and let them hang themselves by their own batard. The reason I bring this up is because the combat mechanics and all of the mechanics of Dungeons and Dragons 5e grind the game to a halt whenever you have to start reading rules and executing on those rules. It took four hours for that King in Yellow story to take place. It took 20 minutes for that Water Knoll story to take place. So the efficiency and power of storytelling is so much greater in systems other than D&D 5e. Now, my players personally love Dungeons and Dragons. They love power leveling and they love dungeon crawling and they love doing all the different math and stuff. And like, I love that too. I love creating like characters and doing that thing. But when I want to tell a story, I don't use Dungeons and Dragons 5e. I use Powered by the Apocalypse Systems. Because all of their myriad of game mechanics are there for the players and the DM to roleplay together. What I want from a role-playing game is for a handful of creative, flavorful rules that help guide our story in the path that we, the players and the DM, want to do together. So Dungeon World has enough rules to fit one page double-sided. And that's it. Those are all the rules that you'll ever have in the game. Then you have your character sheets that have their own little rules on them. You pick up a character sheet, you flip it over, that's all of the rules for your character too. So in like two or three different pages, depending on if you have spells or not, uh, you are able to play this game. And I love that. The onboarding system for anyone new to any TTRPG is so easy. Those two hours that it took me to create that Conjuration Wizard, uh, I was able to just pick up and create myself a little uh, Dungeon World character. The onboarding is amazing, and being able to get in and just tell stories is amazing. But sure, you could have like pre-generated characters and you could make it faster with the Indie Beyond and whatnot. But there are some fundamental differences that make role-playing a lot easier. One, I already told you, was the spout lore. Another is the fact that there is experience when you fail rolls. Nothing sucks more than you go and you roll a perception check, you roll a stealth check, and you fail, and it's like, ah, oh, dang it, I failed. And now I just don't get to do the cool thing. Or you're trying to lockpick a door and you're stuck at the door for 30 minutes because no one can lockpick the door and the door is invulnerable. And you have to find a key and you couldn't find the key until finally you figured out, well, maybe I could do this spell and this spell and you finally unlock the door. In Dungeon World, every time you fail a roll, you gain one experience point. And it takes like 17 or, or like 7 plus your level or whatever to level up. So every time you try something, you either succeed or you learn from your mistakes. And I love that. It never feels like a role is wasted. It feels like every random act is in your party's favor. Even if it doesn't go their way, they'll learn from it and they'll be able to do more cool things later on. Another thing that I love, but I know a lot of people hate, is the freedom of interpretation of the rules. Like, most of the rules are vague enough to be like, oh, you can shapeshift. Well, into what and for how long? And does it mean that I get extra damage? Or what does it mean? And there's so many rule room for interpretation of what your core mechanics of your characters are. And there's so many different interpretations of like, well, what happens if you fail a druid role? Did you just not get to shapeshift? Well, me as the DM, I get to decide. And what I decide was, What's the most fun? The mechanic that I love the most is the bonds and the way that people get experience at the end of the session. Bonds are bonds with other players. You write out your bonds with other players 
things that you have like a conflict with or like something that you want to see come to fruition and you write those out you make those character beat moments before you start playing i brought this concept over into my DD games where i saw a bunch of one-shot people down and like all right you already know each other so tell each other how you know each other and make some 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 bonds and some reasons why you know each other I love that. I love it when characters are able to roleplay with other characters. And not only can they do that, if they do that, they get experience points. The game mechanically rewards roleplaying opportunities. They have alignments. And if you roleplay your alignment, you gain an experience. One of my characters is a fire lizard person, an emulator, and they're evil. We have a good aligned druid and an evil aligned fire wizard. It's hilarious. There's so much conflict there. And if they burn an unwilling sacrifice, they gain an experience. Like that is just written into the rules. So I can just say like, all right, that, that guy looks like a good sacrifice. And he is up to the challenge. And then our good person, uh, a good aligned thing is like, have you changed anyone for the better today? And if they did, they have it, they gain an experience. So they battle it out. Like, how does that, like, do I, if I get to change you from not burning someone, then I get to experience it. I want to burn. And it's so much fun. So much fun. And for me, as the DM, there are three rules at the end of a session to determine whether or not you get one, two, or, or three experience points. One, did you learn something new and interesting about the world? Another, did you overcome a notable enemy or monster? And the last one, did you loot a memorable treasure? Those give me three specific things to put into every single one of my sessions. Like, all right, what type of type of monster or enemy that they can overcome that's like notable, big, or ferocious? Um, and that could be social encounter or whatever. Uh, what's a loot or something that they can gain? Uh, because for the longest time, I forgot that to even put anything in there, and it seemed like I was missing something. So I started putting a lot of one-use items with them, where they would get something to one use, and I gave one of my players a little lock of hair, and it's like, all right, here's a magical lock of hair. Um, and they're like, I immediately burn it. All right, your next roll is with advantage. With a plus one forward. Uh, they're like, Sounds about right. Uh, I I adore my players. They're lovely. And learning something new and interesting about the world, like that is everything that I do. There is not a single moment where you don't learn something interesting about the world. And I love that that mechanically enriches the players' lives and experience. Like another thing that I really like about the system is the combat do you know action economy in D&D? There is no issue with that in Dungeon World. So Dungeon World, like when you roll hack and slash, it, you're going to get damaged when you fight another creature, unless you roll really, really well. And then you get to decide whether you take no damage or you do extra damage. And the action economy is thus. If they don't go and fight something, they don't get damaged. I don't have an initiative order. It's just like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? If you take a lot of turns in a row, you're going to get a lot more damage than these two over here. Like, there's no real turn order, no real initiative. I kind of go through everyone and say, like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? And if there's like a couple of rolls here, then do your thing. If there's a couple of rolls here, do your thing. A couple of rolls here, do your thing. And the action economy is automatically balanced because within the dice themselves tells me whether or not something bad happens to them during that. And I think that's why Powered by the Apocalypse systems are my jam. Because I get to tell a story without the rules getting in the way or slowing down the pace of storytelling. And I think that's what I was missing from Dungeons & Dragons. If you're the type of person that wants to tell stories, 
that when they watch Critical Role, skip the combat sections, that would rather watch Dimension 20 because of their fun and chaotic energy rather than the dramatic storytelling moments, I would highly encourage you to look outside of D&D for your system of choice. I can recommend looking into Powered by the Apocalypse system because it has all the benefits that I just mentioned here. Dungeon World is the first like sub this section thing that they created and it's it's not even the best like i love their they have like a scooby-doo mystery monster of the week thing i could gush about other systems for so long dungeons and dragons is not the only thing out there it was built for people that like dungeon crawling so if you like dungeon crawling keep doing it but if you want something different if you want something more streamlined Search for something streamlined, because it's out there. Bye!